Thank you for joining us. For those who are watching, this is, our, I believe, our third installment of the Songs of Black Hope and Resistance. Very glad that Joe's Pub has asked me to curate this over this last few weeks, and it's been an honor to be with Charles Anthony Bryan. If you saw the first one, if you saw the second one, Mr. Vuyo Satashi. And we have now one of my most favorite spirits, um, an incredible woman who has also been a great presence in one so on the shakes for many years and been around us and has also helped us be strong in adding to her vibration that she brings to us whenever she comes and joins us. We're always happy. Vuyo Satashi is always speaking. The love he has for her in the house and it's just glad to have Ms. Chanel John's here. How you doing? Hello. It's been beautiful to hear you hey. today and to see what you did with your own interpretation of these songs and these songs which you've done today, which some Abby and some Nina. Some Nina, yeah. Who, for you, what is Abby Lincoln to you when we speak about Abby Lincoln? Abby to me is the, she's like the trifecta. You know, in the sense of in the sense that she covers it all mm -hmm. Abby um, as a black woman mm -hmm. has been in an actress she's mm -hmm. been a singer um, she's done everything mm -hmm. and she does it with purpose mm -hmm. so Abby to me is the goal, you know. The goal <laughs> to the get goal. to try and get to. Start. Yeah, to try to get to that 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 level of writing, that level of creating, mm -hmm. where you are authentically who you are, and um, but but you say something. You every time you open your mouth, mm -hmm. you're speaking with wisdom. You mm -hmm. know that's the mm -hmm. goal. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's that's what Abby Abby has meant to me in the last couple of years.
for life. And now we come to now Queen Nina. Mm -hmm. What what does she represent to you? What is she for you? Nina for me is the experience hmm. of being a black woman in song. Um because she's she's so real. She is so real. It's she's someone you know. Um she reflects you, mm. you know. And um you never have to question, you know, what she's saying. Everything is very direct with Nina. Everything mm. is how the black woman faces the world, mm. you know. And um learning I, I actually specifically learned that through Nina. And it was really the, important. The ability to... The ability to put that, that armor on, that kind of like the warrior spirit, you mm. know? And, and walk out every day being a black woman, facing the world with that kind of um, intention mm -hmm. and being direct, you mm -hmm. know? So that was, that's the biggest thing I've learned from Nina, I think. Um, there's so many others. Also to be versatile. Mm. Um, because she, she covers... She does. She can do. Has done everything. Yes, yes, you know, and so. and always kept true to who she was mm -hmm. vocally, doing everything. Mm -hmm. And how some people um, would look at that as being overwhelming or not knowing, you know, mm -hmm. where to place it. For me, it's just Nina. You know, and that's also that's also of course a goal. It's just to be, mm -hmm. just to be, and not have to have things attached. Mm -hmm. You know.
And then uh, for me, I, I feel it, I know for a lot of us in the music community, you are, uh, for a lot of us, uh, a voice that we not only love, but also uh, are very happy that you are in this time, you know, as this black woman that, that sings the way you do and commands the people the way you do it. Has the range and, and variety of the way you sing, you can go into many different vibes, you know. But but what has it been like for you as a black woman in this time now, seeing what has happened to the world, the racial division, etc., etc. You as a black woman in jazz, that also is black music and jaga jaga jaga. What is it? What moments have you had? If you can share a little bit of just what you've been feeling as a black female artist. Wow. Um. What you see outside is what's happening inside. Mm. You know, what is above is below. You know, mm. it's as music has been changing, the world has been changing. They're so connected. Um, and living in New York the past few years, moving from Connecticut, moving from a Jamaican household mm. into this, if fully into this new world. In New York, um, I gradually saw the change in both, you know, and that affected me as well. And um, New York is a lot. Listen, New York is not easy. <laughs> Being a black woman in New York is even harder. <laughs> what, can you, for, for us, that we don't know what that is. What 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 are those struggles that the black that that one you have to face that is different that even man cannot even understand you are always always second guess yourself hmm. you can't say something and have that thing be fact hmm. it's always perspective and everyone else always have a, has a perspective on it and has to share you know so and um that goes in any sector. That goes in business sector. That goes in music. That goes. It's, it's, in it being being a woman have in a man run society, yeah. in a man run um, industry. You know, you're always being questioned to see if what you really want is what you know that you want. Mm. Are you sure that what you want is what you know mm. <laughs> you want? <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? But it's just mm. like, and also, you know. Um, People like to, to speak for you and to speak on you and put things on you so easily um, without knowing any information, without coming to the source, you know. I feel like women always get thrown under the bus when it comes to things like that. Like we, we can't just be in our truth, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it's too easy to put a bad name on a woman. The double standards are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And to go through what we go through and to, and to daily be put in that box, mm -hmm. be, be placed under pressure mm -hmm. um, by, by our own people. Mm -hmm. um, it takes a toll on your spirit. It takes a toll on the music. The music has changed drastically. You know, um, and it makes you go inward. You know, it makes you go inward. And this this time has been a time of of doing just that yeah. too. Leia!
changes would you like to see within black music, jazz, soul music, reggae, rhythm, blues, funk? What what changes would you like to see for the music and for us in this new world that you say we, we're transitioning to and we're going to? What what would you like to see for black music, especially black roots music, like African Caribbean music? Could you, what would you like to see that in a sense of presence changing within the music world and the world in, in general too? I think it's already happening. You feel it? I feel it happening yeah. already. Um, you know how the cycle works. Yeah. You know, everything always comes back around. Mm -hmm. And um, music is always black music. African American music, mm -hmm. African music, mm -hmm. is always at the forefront of music. It's always leading music in a new direction. We just go to different, different places for it. You know, yeah. like ten years ago, it was what it was dance hall, yeah, yeah. and then, and then now is it's Afrobeat. It's changing. It's always changing. But the but the basis of all of it has always been the rhythm. You know, it's always been the drums. And that, it always brings you back to your roots. You can't go too far from that, you know. So I just want more of that in the music. I want people to really musically explore the journey back to their roots. Because what's happening is everything is, it's a me generation, an I generation. So being, Af being an American is not enough. You have to be something in American. You have to be set apart you have to be unique it's a part of people's identity to feel that um that hyphen you know mm -hmm. to live that hyphen and um and that has become important and so I'm, I'm i'm loving watching people really bring their music their roots to the forefront of the music and that's going to change everyone else's music you know everyone else's rhythm but the basis is always going to be, you know, I want to hear some more of what calls my spirit mm. in music. That's just me. That's my personal taste. It has to groove. I got to move. Know, you know what I'm saying? You. Like, I no, got to... That's real. That's real. <laughs> I got to move. So, yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to. And I'm looking forward to more conversation. I'm looking forward to more, um, more um, instrumental features in music bring that back you know like mm -hmm. people that are stepping out like Masego, people that are doing that are playing um like braxton yeah, singing yeah, even yeah. a lot of people are singing and yeah, playing um so so the horn is you know slowly creeping its way back into i like that i love that Amazing. yeah definitely yeah thank you so much for oh my God. doing this and Figuring out with all the stress and everything we had to do it. And thank you, T-Roy. We love you. And we want to also say to uh, Joe's Pub and Alex Knowlton there, thank you for supporting us and us as artists and, and me. And, and we will see you again for next week, which will be Russell Hall. And he will be doing African-Caribbean folk music, Bob Marley's music in the context of protest. And thank you to our musicians today, Barry Stevenson on bass. And of course, Matisse Picard, we had on piano. And again, my name is Malcolm Winston. This was Chanel Johns. See you next week. Ah.